All right, so uh, today we're going to talk about seeds and we'll talk about spacing a little bit. It's raining out today and there's not much I can do. So we'll, we'll talk about seeds and spacing. And I found out last night that uh, I'm going to go back to work in a week. So this is going to be more of a challenge than I ever thought, but I'll get it done. It, it, Maya will help me. So anyhow, if you don't know, Maya is my wife. Uh, so anyhow, uh, let's talk about spacing for a minute. So have you all ever seen those big blue plastic drums or barrels? Well, I cut a piece out of one about, I think it's eight inches, maybe it's 12 inches tall. And uh, that's what I actually use for my mounds. And I just put it down and I space them six feet on um, center from each other. So it's 36 inches across the, the barrel piece and you have you know 18 inches to the edge. And then uh, you have three feet between that mound and the next mound and then 18 inches of it is in the six foot on center so anyways you can figure that out yourself and so i keep them six feet on center from the next mound in all directions so and you're going to put four corn plants in each mound four bean plants in each mound and in between the mounds in the in the valleys as you might call it you're going to put squash so we we talked about you we're talk about some things here so First, we're going to talk about the, the original Three Sisters garden, which is in the front of the house in the front yard, and that's more exposed. And we got trashed by a hurricane last August, late last August, and we actually had to go out and take fence posts and stake up all the corn and, and the pole beans um, because they all got knocked over by the... We had uh, sustained winds at 85 miles an hour for about 10 hours, I believe or something like that, whatever it was. But so we had to go actually um, put everything back up with stakes and tie it up there with hemp. And then the other thing we did last year in the original Three Sisters Garden was we grew zucchini and squash. Um, zucchini and, and crookneck squash. We're no longer going to do that. What we're only going to grow is the, as you'd call it, the winter squashes. Um, and we have a reason for that. They're sprawlers and the vines of the winter squashes not only spread out and um, stop weed growth, um, kind of mitigated on their own, and they provide a, a place to retain a lot of moisture, but also predators, well, not predators, but herbivores, rabbits, voles, things like that, really don't like those as much as the zucchini and the, and the summer squash. So the vines are much more prickly, and they kind of really, until the late fall, they really stop them. And we are going to put up three foot high chicken wire fences everywhere. And that's really just for woodchuck and, and um, rabbit mitigation. So anyways, let's talk about the front three sisters garden and our, our, our plant selection. So I always like to start with the corn because the corn is, you know, that's the base of everything. That's the original sister. That's the oldest sister of them all. And uh, she's the boss, so to speak. So in the front, uh, we're going to use a type of corn called Seneca Red Stalker, and it's a derivative of a of a Seneca um, native corn that's been grown forever. It's not one of the original ones, but it's a derivative. It's something that came out of what they used to grow, and it's a as they call it a Indian corn, and you know it's got all the different colors. And the reason why we're going to grow it is number one, um, I wanted a flint corn or in a multi-purpose corn. This the Seneca Red Stalker can be used as a uh, as a flower corn. It can be used as hominy. Uh, it can be used as green corn and it can also be popped as popcorn. So it's really a multi-purpose corn and the thing that's really important about this corn, it grows 10 to 12 feet tall and the stalks get really big and really strong and we need something that can take the wind. And not only that, the Cherokee Trail of Tear Beans that we grow up front, they'll get 10, 12 feet tall, the, the vines, and they kind of beat up on the uh, the sweet corn that we grew last year. So anyhow, uh, so Seneca Red Stalker corn, I'm excited about it. Uh, it's supposed to be very prolific. It's supposed to be easy to grow here. So we're going to grow four in each hill. So out front, we usually have about, well, we have 50 or so hills. So, and they say one to two years per plant. So that'll be plenty. So then next to it, like I said, in the same mound, we're going to have four bean plants. And we put the bean plants in mainly for the nitrogen and to help feed the corn. But 
So what we're going to grow is a horticultural or, or, or dry bean. So these Cherokee Trail of Tear beans. And these are actually the beans that uh, the Cherokee people took with them on the Trail of Tears with them from the Southeast states, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, to Oklahoma. And I believe the story that I'm told is they still grow them there. And um, so that's what we grew last year. We had amazing success in our little 240 square foot area. We actually got eight pounds of dry beans. So that's, that's really good, I thought. Uh, we also got, um, just so for reference sakes, we got 240 years of, believe it or not, sweet corn last year. We were actually just ate some last night and the night before. We froze a lot of it. So anyways, um, so Cherokee Trilla tear beans, uh, Seneca Red Stalker corn, and then for the squash up front, um, because the, the, the corn takes about 100 to 110 days, and the Cherokee beans take the same amount of time. We're going to grow um, a squash that actually came out of a squash that's known as uh, Iroquois squash. It's another thing that the Seneca people uh, in western New York grew. Um, and it's the ancestor, one of the ancestors, one of the cousins of what you're going to call Waltham butternut squash, which was actually Iroquois or Seneca squash originally. And it's a, winter, it's a winter squash. It looks just like a, a wall fam, as you call it, or a butternut, except that the neck's really curve and the fruits are anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. So they're much larger. And uh, I think that we'll probably, uh, I don't know, I've never grown it before, but if I had to guess, we're going to be buried in it. So, but anyways, that's great. Um, there's lots of places that I can donate it. There's uh, lots of people I can give some to. And we're still eating our winter squash from last year. Actually, tomorrow I'll make some curry with it. As you know, I don't like to throw away pumpkins or winter squash. So those are the three up front. That's the lineup. Now down on the side of the, the hill in the backyard uh, before the field, we got the second Three Sisters garden, which I still got a road to till, but I'll, I'll get to it. Um, so we got three different sisters that you want to say so as i said the corn is the first sister um and and she's the you know she's the boss and then the bean is the second sister she's the middle sister so she's kind of like the go-between like the helper like like my sister my middle sister was and then you got the the we'll just say that the the squash is the youngest sister and the youngest sister is always trying to compete so if you think about the squash she's it's real showy like it spreads out everywhere and it's the flowers are bright and boisterous kind of like the the youngest always is and i kind of know about that because for seven years i was the youngest and if you check me out not that i'm a sister but you know I'm, i was the youngest of my three siblings and uh you know my oldest sister is tall and stoic uh, and my middle sister is the helper always trying to help everybody and I was the person that was all over the place and showy. And if you ever seen me at a powwow in Regilla, you'll know that I'm showy. So anyways, the corn in the backyard, um, we wanted a sweet corn. So we're growing a corn known as Golden Bantam. Now that's a little deceiving because before that, back in the 1700s, it was known as Chambers corn and it was grown in Westfield, Massachusetts, about 45 miles west of where I am right now in Hardwick, Massachusetts. And it's a derivative of a, a native or an Indian corn. And it's a green corn. It's a sweet corn. And we're going to grow 50 hills back there. Um, we got 250 square feet about back there. And uh, it's supposed to give us two to three years per stock. So you can do the math. We're going to have a lot of corn. And like I said, it's okay. I know how to give it to people. I know how to preserve it. I know how to make sure people get to use it. So that's the corn. And the reason we're going to grow that back there is it's great to have a sweet corn to eat it's great to have sweet corn to freeze but this corn is not as tall it's seven to eight feet tall and in the back it's more protective it's on the slope of a hill kind of in a hollow so unless the wind really comes out of the out of the northeast um actually the north the east northeast it's really not going to hit it that hard it's really protected and so we don't really have prevailing winds from that way so anyways, our, our storms tend to come from the, the southwest when we get real bad ones here. So, so the corn is a golden bantam. 
and it's been around forever. It's true. It's tried. It's it's not a hybrid or anything like that. It's a it's an heirloom. Um, and then the beans back there, we're gonna grow uh, these beans called the Lena Cisco Bird Egg Bean. And the closest I can tell is, and the reason I'm growing them is because I really wanted to grow Seneca Bird Egg Beans, but I can't get any seeds. So when I can't get the seeds, I might grow them, but I just can't get my hands on them right now. And they're a, a cranberry bean. So what that means is uh, they have a little bit of mottled red and white in them. And they're a bush bean. And the reason why we're growing a bush bean back then, back there, is because we have the shorter corn. Now you don't have to have a bean that trellises. Really what the bean is about is putting the nitrogen back and helping feed the corn. So these are supposed to be super prolific. Um, from my research, I think the yields are going to be crazy. It should grow great. Uh, this is uh, an heirloom again. So that's the bean, Lena Cisco bird egg bean. And now the squash. So back here, we're going to grow my pot marins. So you're, what is a pot marin? Well, I'm sure you've all heard of a golden hubbard or maybe a Boston marrow or maybe a red curry. Well, the pot marin, and I, I'm probably saying it wrong, and it's sort of like a French word, and I'm horrible with that. And there's another word that the actual French is, but this is one of the original winter squashes grown. If you look up a Lakota field winter pumpkin, um, it looks just like it. So um, the my people, the, the Wendat, um, supposedly grew this for thousands of years. Um, it spread through all out the Northeast. A lot of people grew this. Um, they were very, very good to us last year. We still have some frozen. We still have 13 quarts canned. Um, I've made bread with them. I've made curries with them, spaghetti sauce, um, you, uh, bannock, cookies. Um, I mixed it in oatmeal. I, I've really used these squash slash pumpkins and uh, you, later on, as the year goes along, you'll hear me, hear me rail against using vegetables and, and specifically pumpkin and corn as ornaments and decorations. Uh, I just can't get with it. There's so much um, hunger and food insecurity in the world, and we're taking agricultural acreage and growing things for ornamental uses and for show rather than sustain our fellow human beings. I just can't get on board with that. I'm sorry. So anyways, um, in the back now, the, uh, the pot marins, they really sprawl out. So we only grew six plants last year and I think we got, uh, 39 pot marins and they're, they're not quite as big as the Pennsylvania Dutch, um, long nets or the, the Iroquois squash. They're only anywhere from six to 10 pounds. You know, they're about the size of like this, maybe a little soccer, you soccer ball or something. So anyways, um. And they're amazing because they don't really taste like a winter squash. They taste more like a potato or a chestnut, and hence the name pot marin. There's some French derivative that it, potato chestnut, something like that. So anyways, those are the three. So I wanted to talk about a little bit where I get my seeds. And I'm not affiliated with these people at all, but I think a lot of what they do, and I, I think a lot of all the organizations that do the same thing. I get all my seeds from Seed Savers. Um, you can look them up online. Now I'm gonna tell you this, when you do these kind of gardens with these heirloom seeds, you have to order your seeds really early. Like we ordered our seeds back in the beginning of December because these seeds sell out fast at these type of seed warehouses. So we use Seed Saver. Um, sometimes I'll get stuff from Baker Creek. There's lots of great ones out there. Uh, Vermont Bean Company, They're, I could keep going. I'm not affiliated with any of them. I'm just giving you ideas. So that's that's the lineup that's what we're going to grow the three sisters uh two different gardens and we'll uh the next time i guess we'll probably be doing some layout so i'll just like i said i'm going to go pretty in depth with this this year and i hope you learn something and i just want to let you know right now i do not think i'm an expert i'm sure there's thousands of people that know way more about this than me um, but I had so much success with this last year that I'm excited and I just want to share what I learned and hopefully some of, someone else will uh, feel that same excitement and have that same success. So thanks, MedicineRiverDreams.org, from where I stand. And this is the Three Sisters Garden Series.